Good morning, how are you doing? So a couple of weeks ago I took my mum out to Truro and I took her to a vegetarian cafe where we had the most amazing lunch. A brunch, it wasn't even lunch, it was brunch. It was just, it was really simple and really good food and it got the brain going as to like this is the kind of food that I want to cook, that I want to make, that I want to eat. And this took me down this whole road of thinking that I kind of want to learn more about plant-based food, about vegan food, basically about turning vegetables into the most delicious meal you could imagine. I have no plans to go vegan, but I just, I love veggies and obviously I'm a food writer and I kind of think that I owe it to the world of vegetables to just get better at cooking them. So this led to a conversation with a friend of mine where I said, do you know what I really could do with is like a, like a yoga retreat where I go and help them out in the kitchen for a week or two weeks or the, the summer or something. Uh, and while I'm there, I get to learn all about vegan food because every vegan meal I've had, not the stuff in the supermarket freezers with barcodes on and fake sausages and fake bacon. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about real vegan food using vegetables, <laughs> plant-based vegan, not processed based vegan. Anyway, two days after this conversation with my mate Angie, two days, she messages me and says, you won't believe this. A friend of mine works at a retreat in the kitchen and she's short staff next week. Can you help? <laughs> the synchronicity is crazy. So here I am. I've just left the campsite that I've stayed on the last two nights in that bell tent, this one. So I'm now headed off to this retreat centre. And I don't know anything about it really, other than what I've seen on their website. It looks very cool. So I'm a little bit early, so I'm just parked up in the forest a couple of miles away. I have no idea how they feel about me filming yet, so we might have to be a little bit undercover. Or not. We'll see. Whoa, this girl is knackered. I'm not used to having to work that hard. <laughs> so it's uh, five to nine. I think I finished at eight. Started at nine this morning, finished at eight tonight. I am shattered. I have had a brilliant day. It's been really good fun working with a lovely team of people, cooking some amazing food. But wow, my body feels very broken right now. Uh, this is where I'm camping beautiful view that way a uh, beautiful view that way and i can't see what you're seeing there but there's a viewer out there too hopefully in the morning i'll have a bit of energy to actually go and walk around the site because i still haven't even seen it all the guests that are here at the moment it is a maker's week from what i can work out i still haven't actually asked anybody about that because i've been too busy trying to find tin openers and working out how to make muffins to feed 10 million people uh, but um, at supper, we served supper, which was a, let me get this right, a potato, chickpea and Swiss chard curry with rice and raita. Um, we served that and the people that came up from the workshops had, <clears throat> they'd been making, well, somebody had made like a little foraging pouch basket out of grasses or maybe willow. I'm, I didn't get a close enough look. And somebody else had a water bottle that they'd covered with, like they'd woven, I guess, willow or something round their water bottle. It looks so pretty. Um, I'm really sorry. I really didn't get a chance to pull the camera out today. But I will try harder tomorrow because I want to share this magic place with you. It's just quite outstanding. It's way out of my comfort zone, this is hugely much so I'd be way more comfortable like being one of the kitchen porters and like doing the washing up I feel very underqualified to be a chef at a retreat but what's really interesting is that this is my skill set this is what I do I d obviously I do it on a much smaller scale it feels very comfortable to me physically it's really hard because I'm not used to actually physically working and being on my feet all day um, I'm much more used to sitting behind a computer all day so it's tiring but the actual preparing the food and feeding people is yeah, it's right up my street. I'm loving it. Anyway, I gotta go sleep. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow and hopefully I'll get to share some of this beautiful place with you. I think you're gonna love it. Night night.
just having a wander around the site. It's really early, no one else seems to be up. And I've just come down this grass track because I saw a black deer, which sounds crazy, but I'm convinced I just saw a black deer. It just ran off into the woods. Shucks, didn't have the camera on. <laughs> This is where the makers must be hanging out. And there's their fire pit in the middle. And then this is the stuff they've been working on. Wow, that's so cool. Beautiful. And what a lovely building. I'm just making my morning coffee and yesterday I had a banging headache and I figured it was because I wasn't drinking enough water and it was really hot in the kitchen and stuff but you know what I think it's that I didn't have enough coffee <laughs> that's the only downside with having a bit of a coffee habit is that when you don't get it it does give you a banging headache so I'm having an extra strong one this morning hopefully it's going to kick start me <laughs> it's so peaceful here I slept with the door open again last night just lovely Really lovely. I'm going to look at their courses actually and see if there's any courses that Johnny and I want to come and do. It'd be a very cool place to hang out. This, my friends, is pantry goals. This food is all fresh and organic and utterly delicious, man. Oh, look at this. So beautiful. Red onions, white onions, there's fresh turmeric and garlic and ginger and all sorts. Beautiful courgettes, huge mushrooms. Wow, that really is a huge mushroom. Um, beautiful beetroots, more beetroots, more mushrooms. Oh, look at these aubergines, perfect. These have just come in today. Tons of red onions, um, carrots, all organic. Onions, onions, potatoes, more carrots. This is like my idea of heaven. This is why I'm here. This is the kind of food, it's just, it's food. <laughs> A lot of the crap people eat is not food. This, this is food. And this is a very cool door. Well, that's me done for the day. 
It's about nine o'clock at night. I've been back in the van probably an hour and a half and I am shattered. It was so, so hot in that kitchen today. Oh my goodness. We had the oven on, I think, all day. All day. And I was stirring a massive cauldron of beautiful cabbage. Savoy cabbage is my favourite. And cabbage is such an underrated vegetable, people. Um, and we flavoured it with caraway and with fennel and with soy sauce and put some sultanas in there and we just sautéed it down and it just wilted into this beautiful pan of mm, this gorgeousness but stirring a big hot pan over a hot oven on a hot day I got pretty wobbly in there I have to say it was it was hard going it was really hot so I'm back in Myrtle obviously in my little sanctuary and chatted with Johnny and just kind of binging a little bit of YouTube as you do and I think I'm going to call it a day I'm going to have an early night and then tomorrow I've got to do prep for lunch, serve lunch, do a couple of snacks, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and then I'm done for the day. I don't have to cook a supper tomorrow night. Um, the guests that are here on site are leaving tomorrow when they finish um, the Friday's workshop. But yes, this girl is tired. I'm going to go and get my head down. So I will pick you guys up in the morning. Good night. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, another beautiful day. I've had to um, pull my little muslin curtain across because the sun coming in here is already so, so hot. And there's the view out of my side door. How pretty. Oh, gorgeous place. England is so freaking beautiful. It's not just Cornwall. I apologise. I always make it say, sound like Cornwall is the best place on the planet, and obviously it is. But I'd like to kind of give some credit to Devon too. Devon is pretty stunning. Uh, so I've just showered, good showers, um, and I'm about to have a coffee to set me up for the day. And I'm going to do some journaling. I did some yesterday morning. It really, really helped me. Um, I've been, I'm going through some health stuff at the moment, which is, I'm finding very frustrating. Like obviously the NHS is in a little bit of a pickle at the moment um, and everything is getting delayed and it's just, it's causing me some, I guess, some anxiety really. Um, but I'm finding, and it's waking me up in the night thinking about it, and it's so silly. What I'm thinking about isn't even worthy of being wakeful. But you know what it's like in the middle of the night when you just, your mind won't stop. So I'm finding that journaling is helping that. Um, and I'm doing that on the iPad, which is, um, it's actually kind of nice. I'm kind of enjoying that. I'm very much a stationary girl. I think most ladies love stationary. And I've usually journal in a traveller's notebook, a beautiful leather traveller's notebook. Um, but I'm trying it out on the iPad and actually I kind of like it. Anyway, coffee, journaling, and then I'm going to head on down um, and I'll probably get a little bit of an early start today just because the kitchen's going to be cool at this time of day. So the more I can get done now, the earlier I can finish when it's really, really hot in there. And obviously I'm an early bird, so let's get the work over and done with early. <gasps> but first, coffee. <laughs> End of day three in the bag some more beautiful food was made today really really lovely um sophia who's the lady who runs the whole kitchen here it's her birthday celebration tonight so i've been invited to join them down at the lake for some nibbles and prosecco should be a lovely evening i'm not drinking though i have a big day in that kitchen tomorrow i am the chef tomorrow i'm the lead which is a little bit terrifying so i need to have a clear head especially because of this heat so I'm gonna be a good girl and stick to the water. Hey you, hi, who are you? <laughs> I'm ashamed to say it's quarter to nine and I've, I've hit a wall. I'm um, heading off to bed, but um, the guests today have gone home. So I'm gonna show you in one of the yurts. It's so cool. Hang on, let me turn the camera around. So some of the party goers are sleeping in here, I believe. Um, but this is the yurt. Actually, let me put this on wide camera. There we go, that's better. And then there's a lovely window in the roof. And there's lots of them. This is East Village. There's also another little 
village of yurts. I'm presuming that would be West Village, but don't quote me on it. But aren't they adorable? Like little hobbit houses. And this is a big one. Let's go and see what's in here. There's a little compost toilet just there. Oh, wow. So this is like a cob house. Oh my gosh. That is so beautiful. And I'm guessing that that means that there's a bed up there as well. Oh my gosh, this is stunning. Wow. Wow. That's insane. How cool. So rather than canvas walls, they've obviously got like a cob in here. So it's a cob roundhouse. That's so cool. It's very warm in here. Wow. But with the same kind of yurt structure roof. It's stunning. Right, that is me ready for the day ahead. It's still really, really early. I don't start officially until 10 today, but because the kitchen is so much cooler in the morning, I think I'm gonna head down now. Hang on, I'm just gonna turn you off and go and find out what time it is, because I'm actually interested to know myself. Whoa, it's 10 to seven in the morning. That is pretty early, but the kitchen is so beautifully cool at this time of day, and I've got a lot of oven and hob work to do today. I'm making that mushroom stroganoff again, which, is my new favorite recipe. I'm gonna um, tweak it and obviously downsize it because that recipe makes a bazillion portions. I'm gonna work out how to make a smaller version of it using um, just really basic store cupboard ingredients for you beauties. And I already know that it's gonna be a staple in our camper van world. Although Johnny doesn't like mushrooms. I think I'm gonna cook it for him and just cross my fingers that he really enjoys it. It's so good. How could he not? Okay, I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to go and start work at 10 to 7 in the morning. <laughs> The uh, Cornish sea salt from my camper van because a good focaccia needs nice big crystals and good quality salt on. It's just a little sprinkle of that. Delicious. How good do you reckon that's going to be? Whoa. <laughs> I am excited to watch this cook. This is the rocket fuel I've brought with me this week. Uh, this is a really concentrated cold brew mix, so really strong uh, coffee. And just a little bit like that in cold water and that will keep me going all morning. And it stopped me getting headaches because it's too hot to drink hot coffee in here. So I'm so glad I brought my trusty cold brew. Oh, doesn't that look pretty behind me? Uh, let me show you around the kitchen. Okay, so there's just like storage and stuff, but we've got some purple elderflower cordial. There's some, some kefir. There's some homemade, oh, where are you? There's some homemade sauerkraut, lots of uh, homemade kimchi, and then all the wonderful spices here. This just makes my heart so happy. Ah, oh, damn, there's poppy seeds. I would have put them on the focaccia if I'd realised they were there. Peppercorn.
acorns, all kinds of spices and herbs, chia seeds. This is dried um, garlic flakes. So if you want garlic powder, you can just grind them up in the spice grinder. Coriander seeds, star anise, cinnamon, cardamom there. These are the two spice grinders here. And then over here, this is the exciting shelf. There's all kinds of wonderful stuff here. So there's some flowers, there's some nettle seeds, uh, rose petals that looks like, uh, the buds of something, I'm not entirely sure what. It's just like really some dried rosemary. And this is just what the staff go out and pick and dry and then, I don't know, use for themselves or use on the food. Oh, ground cardamom. I would have used that yesterday. I had to grind my own. I didn't realize that was there. And then this is the cake that I made yesterday. So that's like a chocolate crumble cake with fruit in. So it's really moist and it's almost like a chocolate brownie, but it's the fruit that makes it all sticky and moist. Really delicious. So that's for today's uh, guests. This here, I've left a box out for um, any of the volunteers or staff that come through today. That's just like all the off cuts from cutting the cake up. So I'm gonna put a note on there, just dive in and help yourself. So we've got organic tamari and all the different flavorings and oils and vinegars and lemon juice and lime juice and balsamic vinegar, apple cider vinegar, uh, organic coconut oil for cooking, salt in here is salt and pepper uh, this big pot here this is ready for today so this is the base of my pea and mint soup that i'll be making for lunch oh gosh that smells good and then this is where the kps work the kps finished before we did yesterday so unfortunately whoever comes in today is gonna start off with a big old pile of washing up and then if we come outside the kitchen, this is where the guests uh, like rinse their bowls off so the KPs can come and collect them and actually wash them up and sterilize them. And up here we've got nasturtiums and nettles and there's tomatoes in there, there's Swiss chard, there's all sorts growing in there. This is the beautiful like herb wigwam. There's all kinds in there. There's mint, borage, rosemary, thyme, sage, fennel. Oh, just gorgeous. Growing up here is the jasmine, and I also noticed yesterday there's passion flowers in here. Look at these beauties! And I didn't even see them for the first two days I was here. And then there, this is where the guests can sit and eat on a nice sunny day. And there's also like a circle area there. This table here with the green cloth that's falling off, that is where we serve the food. And then when it's winter or bad weather, this is the dining yurt. So there's a lovely wood burner in here for like winter courses or in cold weather. And then all the tables here are just set up for really lovely meals. And then this is the tea and coffee station where guests can make their own drinks and huge recycling station underneath. Oh my gosh, this fridge makes me happy as a lactose intolerant. It's actually looking really empty now. There's normally, I think, three or four different types of milk in there. That'll no doubt get filled up today. Coffee, I'll put a fresh pot of coffee on soon. And then we're back in the kitchen. It is such a lovely environment to make food in and because the food is such good quality, I don't know, I don't think I would enjoy this as much if it was just regular food that you would normally find in a cafe or restaurant kitchen of like okay quality. But because this stuff is it's about 80% organic, I think like all the vegetables I believe are organic. Um, and most of the ingredients in the dry stores are organic. <laughs> it's just. There's so much care that goes into the food here and it just makes my heart so, so happy. I quite like it here, can you tell? <laughs> Actually, let me show you the menu. So we're gonna do a coffee break where I'm gonna serve that chocolate crumble cake. And then for lunch, it's pea and mint soup with a big couscous salad, a massive bowl of green leaves with just a very simple salad dressing, the focaccia that's in the oven, then at half past three, there'll be hummus and oat cakes. Uh, we made the hummus yesterday, so that's done. And then supper, I think it's at 6.30, but I need to check. 
They're actually bringing their own drinks, so we're gonna put out wine glasses with crisps and olives. I'm gonna make that beautiful mushroom stroganoff again. And then a big vat of brown rice, and then a huge pan of wilted greens, which I wanna prep this morning because that's really hot work cooking that. And then my beautiful plum and pear crumble, and we'll be serving that with the oatly cream. Doesn't that sound like a delicious day of food? For my wilted greens, I'm gonna use this tender stem broccoli. I'm gonna use up these uh, Savoy cabbages. Oh, I love you, Savoy. And then I'm gonna take all the tops off these beetroot um, and add these. All these leaves are perfectly edible and really delicious. Um, and these red stems will wilt down in it too. Uh, we're not using the beetroot to in today's menu, but if you leave the leaves on, then they can start to rot and then they'll make your beetroot um, rot faster than if you take the leaves off. So these need to come off today anyway. So I'm gonna take them off now, wash them, and then add them to the big greens pan. Wow, that is a lot of beetroot leaves, huh? Right, let's get these cleaned and prepped. Check out these bad boys. How good does that look? Wow. Delicious. Can't wait to cut that up. Good morning! It's Sunday morning. It's my last day here and I'm actually done. I've just showered. There's no guests on site. There's no staff around, so I haven't seen anyone today. Uh, so I'm going to put the kettle on and then I'm going to race myself. By the time the kettle is boiled, I want the van all packed away and travel ready because I'm still all set up in bed mode. Uh, because if I don't turn this into a challenge or a game, there's a fair chance that I'm just going to sit here all day and as lovely as that would be unfortunately I have to go to my hospital job tomorrow so I have to get back today and I have to wash some clothes because everything was just ringing with sweat this week everything is incredibly grubby so uh, I'm about an hour from home so once I'm done once I've had my coffee then I is going to hit the road I've just been into the kitchen and I've just left the girls um, a message on the chalkboard in there and realised that I'd left a crumble out from last night. So I packed all that away into tubs, put it in the fridge, labelled it up and I might have had a cheeky little bowl of plum, pear and cardamom crumble, which I made, which I have to say, it was rather delicious. The fruity bit was quite tart and like big chunks of fruit. It was really good. And then the topping had... It was quite, it wasn't really sweet, but it was, it balanced well with the bottom. And it had date syrup and mm, golden caster sugar and loads of spices. And there was some leftover flapjack crumbled up. Ugh, it was really good. I was actually going to stop on the way home and get a bacon butty <laughs> because this meat eater has been a vegan all week. But now I've had crumble, I don't need to. Save the pigs, man. Peace. Ah, oh, the angels started singing. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Oh, I might just sit here and sip this for a while. I don't know why I'm whispering. I think I'm having a spiritual moment with my coffee. Okay, that's me done. I am out of here. Embercoom, thank you. Baptism of fire, literally with this heat. But I've had a brilliant week. Thank you so, so much. And Sophia, who is the kitchen manager, thank you, my darling, for trusting me with your kitchen. I really enjoyed the quality of the ingredients that I got to play with. And I really loved making such magical food and feeding such hungry and happy people. It's been an incredible experience and I'm pretty sure I'll be back. Big love everyone, Janie signing off and until next Friday, stay cool.